When you are rewarded for something you did, something very special occurs in your brain. A neurotransmitter is released, that is called dopamine. And dopamine has two functions. First, it gives you a positive feeling. You feel good about what you did. But much more importantly, the dopamine rush will make you do the same thing again. It will make you take the same decision, when confronted with a similar situation. It is, what is called, a reinforcer of behavior. Take this rat. It has electrodes implanted in its reward circuits. Whenever he steps on this lever, the electrodes will activate the reward neurons. Dopamine will be released. The rat will feel good about his action. So, he will do it again. And again. And again. In no time, the rat will be addicted to pushing this button. So strong a reinforcer dopamine is. You may ask, a rat. Pushing buttons. How is that relevant to us, human beings? Well. We are addicted to pushing buttons too, nowadays. Think of it for a moment. Why are we so addicted to our mobile phones? Isn't that the same mechanism? It may very well be. Because whenever we push a few buttons on our phones, we too get rewarded. By receiving a WhatsApp message from our friends or loved ones. By seeing a funny video. By finding the restaurant we look for. Every time we push these buttons, some need we have, gets fulfilled. That is why they are so addictive. Link a simple action to something we find rewarding, and addiction will follow automatically. Our brains are made to get addicted. To something. That's why our brains always make us want more. Better. Bigger. Higher. Faster. More beautiful. More luxurious. Tastier. More fun. That may sound, well, greedy. But at the same time, our addiction to reward, our greed, makes us feel motivated to be the best. To win. Is there an athlete without greed? Our desire for reward, is the emotion underlying friendship and love. It causes the passion we feel for our hobbies. Greed, causes the ambition to make the best of our lives. Every time we feel enthusiastic, we feel motivated, it is our intrinsic drive for reward that makes us feel like that. And yes, when things get out of hand, we get obsessive. Or addicted. To drugs, to work, to sex, to running, to Facebook or Instagram. It is unwise to underestimate the power of greed. The power of our reward circuits. Humans are sensitive to a very wide range of rewards. All animals find food and sex rewarding. But we are social animals, so we equally value a compliment from someone at work. And feel honored when we are given an award or alike, on Facebook. And aren't we all, in some way, sensitive to luxury, status, or money? A key principle of changing behavior, is reward. Let's have a look. Isn't using a bit of dopamine a much more effective, or at least much more fun way of letting people make the healthy choice? Instead of nagging people about how they should exercise more? Isn't this also the principle behind what we call gamification? Research has shown that people tend to be much more persistent in exercising when they use apps, that reward them with points and levels. That present them weekly challenges. Particularly when there is a social element involved, 
showing you how you keep up with, or even exceed, the performance of others. Successful behavioral change campaigns have used the principle of reward. In 1995, Belgium launched a campaign against drunk driving. Years of information campaigns about the dangers of drinking behind the wheel had failed. So this time, they tried something else. They introduced Bob. Bob was the designated driver. The one who would not drink on the night out. It worked. Drunk driving decreased. A few years later the campaign was copied by several other countries in Europe, including the Netherlands, where it worked as well. The Bob campaign has become one of the most effective behavioral change campaigns in history. So, why was the Bob campaign so successful? A major element of the campaign was that it portrayed Bob as the hero. The hero of his friends. Bob was fun, funnier than most of his drunken mates. It was cool to be Bob. You could feel good about being the designated driver. In short, Bob was rewarded for his behavior. Bob got a shot of dopamine, instead of a beer. Reward is the essence of all good marketing. Associate a product or a brand with something we find intrinsically rewarding, and it will sell. Almost all perfume is marketed by associating it with sex, with lust, with beauty and attractiveness, with things we value highly. So highly, that in the end we are prepared to pay something like 90 euros for a bottle of, well, a bit of smelly fluid. Or take the Nespresso commercials, with George Clooney. He's a sexy guy. He will make the dopamine flow in many women's heads, and there he is, fussing with his Nespresso cups. A bit clumsy, a bit uncertain. How charming. So that in the end, you are willing to pay, 40 cents for a small aluminum cup, filled with a few grains of coffee, that you still have to make yourself. Quite expensive, if you think of it. But on the other hand, the 40 cents also buys you a bit of George Clooney. Of course people have higher needs than sex or George Clooney. Remember Maslow's Pyramid? Remember the need for esteem, the need to be respected by others? Or the need to be unique, special, or to put yourself on a pedestal? Apple is a typical example of a brand that, certainly in its beginning, employed this need we all have. Because if you bought an Apple, instead of the mainstream gray Microsoft box, you were special. You were different. You could rise from the colorless masses. Literally. And then there is Maslow's Pinnacle. To become the true you. The need to be creative, spontaneous, and wise. To be better off than those poor slobs working for money. To have higher goals in life. To ride the moral high grounds. Wanna achieve that? Well, buy your groceries at Whole Foods or Eco Plaza. Alright, you'll have to pay 8 euros for your cucumber. But boy, can you feel good about yourselves. So do you want to sell a product? Do you want to change the way people behave? Then always, always, ask yourself, what's in it for them? What will be their reward? And do they see that reward? Do they feel it? Do they feel it now? Because only then you push one of the most fundamental buttons in our brains. The button I like to call greed. 